Guys, welcome back to football season. Chris Solari here from the Detroit Free Press along with sports columnist Sean Windsor and Lansing State Journal sports columnist Graham Couch. We just got out of Mark D'Antonio's first preview press conference. Uh, Spartans play Tulsa Friday night Labor Day opener and guys I think the, probably the biggest news in this was the offensive line shuffling. A.J. R. Curry's in at left tackle. Uh, Colt Schoen's not on the depth chart. D'Antonio says he's battling a back injury and we were here a year ago at this point where Chewens didn't play in the first game and the offensive line had issues. Uh, how, for both of you guys, how important will it be this first few weeks to maintain that continuity up front and, and get guys in the right spot so, so the shuffling doesn't happen like last year? Well, the offensive line to me is, as much as anything, the story of the season because their ceiling is predicated on them being able to get a push and they haven't been able to do it since 2015. And so, yeah, absolutely continuity helps. Development helps. I mean, the other problem with Cole Chewins is they, I think they were hoping a couple years ago he would develop into another Jack Conklin, and it really hasn't happened either there. So, yeah, no, they need that group to get a push. And if, cause it, if you get a push against Tulsa, it doesn't mean you're going to get a push against Ohio State. But if you can, you're going to have trouble for, for a long while. And I think we've seen that in recent years where you've seen it right out of the gate. Utah State, Bowling Green, haven't been able to run the ball, and, and that's, that's manifested itself throughout yeah. the season. So, well, and, the, and the, so, so talking about all this change, which we don't know what's going to be right yet. And then and Coach Antonio doesn't want to talk about that today. He wants to keep it behind the curtain, so to speak, yep. with the new offensive changes. But I, I'm with you. None of that matters, right? I mean, we sat in California in this late December, or whenever that was, for the bowl game, yep. and watched the offensive line not be able to get a push. And frankly, the receivers not be able to get open. And it's harder to see that on TV, but when you're, in the, when you're at the stadium, you can see that. All the changes won't matter if those guys can't get open if there's no push up front. So, I don't know that's a great sign. Uh, injuries were obviously a huge part of the shuffle last year, and hopefully it will be limited to this for two weeks. Yeah, and, you know, I think behind them uh, right now, Connor Hayward listed as the number one, a couple whores between Ladarius Jefferson and Elijah Collins. Those And, and Mark Antonio talked about the running back situation being fluid in this game. And, and guys, it, it's going to be up front for those guys to develop the holes, but those guys behind them also have to show the ability to hit those holes. They're so desperate for offense. If anybody shows it, like all these positions are up for grabs. If, if there's a receiver who catches fire, if there's a running back who gets in a groove, any of those things happen, somebody's got a chance to be the guy and, or, or at least be much more featured or have the depth chart in week two look severely different, I think. I, I think they are, they are, it is a show me season, and if somebody shows them early on, they'll, they'll get a look. And, and Dan Tony just said as much today, didn't they? All the young guys yeah. behind, you know, especially even at the receiver position. I'm really curious, so we're talking about a push of the offensive line, but can they protect too? Because that's been an issue a little bit. Obviously, Logan Lurkey was hurt last year. Um, keeping him upright is, is, to me, the other key of this season. Well, as well as Lurkey's being healthy and showing what he did in the spring with his velocity, his arm strength, uh, what we've seen in limited doses and, and views this this fall already. Um, and, and everybody's talked about Lurkey looking like the guy from a couple of years ago and having that arm strength back and everything else. Uh, but, you know, until we see what changes, and, and Mark D'Antonio did not want to reveal any schematic issues or, or, or differences that we might see, or even how much different. I think he used, the closest he came was saying a couple changes. Um, so I, I guess, you know, what do we know about Brian Lewerke? And, and you mentioned he's, about the line. How critical is he? He's the one guy. I mean, I, I think the receivers sort of get a pass a little bit the last year just about how banged up they were, really, one through seven, but one through four especially. And, couple of those guys we've seen produce in the past. I, th I think of all the guys there are questions about, the one I probably have the most faith in having a bounce back, to what degree? I'm not saying NFL level or anything necessarily, right. but it is Brian Lewerke. I think if he's healthy, we've seen a, a pretty good gamer level from him in the past, and, and he's going to be driven. I think the offensive line and running backs, we haven't seen from. Yeah, and I think that's that's probably a greater greater question. And real quick with Lewerke, and, and he and I, took, not he and I, but he talked about this uh, a couple times during the preseason. Last year, before the injury, he, he wasn't, it wasn't look, it wasn't just an injury. It was some decision making right. issues, not necessarily where to throw, but more about when to leave the pocket and when to stay in the pocket. He had the NFL in the back of his mind. He was thinking about the scouts and GMs at that level and, and how he was going to show them he belonged at that level. Well, and that got pocket pass exactly, and that got in his way a little bit. And he's talked about that, and I think he feels a little bit. At least he says he feels a bit more relaxed and learning how to be who he is. And trust him that that will be enough, and I think that should vote well for him this year. So too many can say, "Oh, well." And, and he's got to be like you see guys like Trace McSorley get legitimate shots in the NFL. 
you know, things like that, I think, have got to be comforting that you be who you are. Because one of his greatest strengths, at least at this level, and I think at any level, is that he is a true dual threat quarterback who is a pass first quarterback. There aren't a lot of those guys. So yeah. most guys' instinct is to flee and run, and, and he is not that guy. And he's got a pretty live arm, and he, you know, he runs out of trouble pretty well. I mean, he's got, he's got a lot of good gifts. He's got to be accurate enough, he's got to have the zip. Tulsa's a team, we talked a little bit about the defensive side for Michigan State. Tulsa's a team that runs the ball. They ran for over 200 yards a game last year. Um, not many changes on Michigan State's defense up front. Um, you know, the depth chart pretty much played out how we thought it would. Um, but one of the untalked about things I think that really hasn't been there is the veteran presence behind the starters that was lost with guys like Matt Morrissey and Gerald Owens and and Byron Bulla and Grayson Miller, who, who played a lot of football and won a lot of games. There's going to be a lot of guys on the field, guys like Kalen Gervin and Shakur Brown, when they're going tempo and they got to change things. And Xavier Henderson now takes over as the starting safety. But uh, guys, to, to elevate and keep this defense where it was and, and maybe take that next step to be a top five or, or even the top of the country, those backups are going to have to play some key football and, and good football. Well, and I would ask you this, Graham. It seems to me that the backups this year are going to have a little bit more speed. Yes. Especially in the back seven. Yeah. And I think that, you know, maybe they won't know where to be quite the same, but if they can develop into that, I think there's a little bit more athleticism and overall raw talent in the depth chart. There sure. is, although athleticism and speed doesn't always translate to tackling in space. Right. And that's what this right. defense did really well at the end of last year. Six games, they were as, about as good as Michigan State's defense has ever been that I've seen. And so, again, young players, yeah. you have to see that, you know. On, on top of knowing angles, knowing yeah. tendencies, knowing plays, and and all those other things. The other, uh, the other thing, real quick, uh, special teams. Um, you know, it's been something that fans have talked a lot about. Uh, they look like they're going to get a little faster back there. Daryl Stewart's back. He returned kickoffs previously. He's back to kickoffs now. Jalen Naylor gets his chance on punt returns. He's going to be a guy at wide receiver that you, you can't lose, and you need that speed. But they also realize that they need a playmaker and some speed in, in the return game to try and flip the field and help the offense. They need somebody who scares people a little bit. It affects punters. It affects, you know, obviously field position. And, and Naylor has that speed. Whether he has the knack, we're going to find out. Uh, Stewart has not been a burner of that position previously, but he's been, he's been adequate. Their numbers actually in the return game on kickoffs haven't been absolutely horrible lately, but they just haven't had somebody who scares you. And that's, and that's a good point, too, because, in, in Sean, I was watching uh, a playback of the 2017 Ohio State-Penn State game last night. Saquon That's what you were watching doing last night? Yeah. Saquon Barkley takes it back to the house, has some big returns. Ohio State, the rest of that game, they're down uh, by 20 points. They, they kept squib kicking and kicking away from it. That, that fear factor is almost as good as the returns now. I, what, what scares me is that you were watching Ohio State. I know. Yeah, I know. Are you working on a divorce? I mean, is it, what's going on that we don't, man. we don't know about? It. Something's going on. It was in between Big Ten shows. Okay. okay. No, I mean, to your point, yeah, you, I'm with both of you. You gotta have some speed. Look, Daryl Stewart, Stewart can make people miss a little bit. He's not a burner. Jalen Naylor maybe can do both yeah. if he if he if the instincts are there, as you as you say. Yeah. see. Well, guys, uh, Friday gets live 7 p.m. at Spartan Stadium here. This tree behind us will be changing colors throughout the year, so make sure you keep an eye on freeb.com and lsj.com uh, to see what color it is and see what part of the season we're in. Thanks for watching.